Many, many years ago when I was in college, I had the, the pleasure of meeting one of the true American thinkers, Buckminster Fuller, at a lecture at the college. And um, I was very impressed with many things he had to say. And his just, you know, there were people in the audience saying, I always heard that there were people who were true thinkers, and this is one of them. And, you know, he talked about many things. He talked about the geodesic dome and many other things. He also mentioned um, the term he had coined for uh, tensional integrity in a structure, which he called tensegrity. Here's just a random website on tensegrity, and it shows some different examples of simple tensegrity structures. Just, you know, a few rods which are in compression, and then light pieces of string uh, connecting them, and those are always under tension. And it's the balance of the tensions and the compressions in the two different kinds of structure that give the in, give the entire structure its structural integrity or the tensegrity as Buckminster would have called it. Here's a Wikipedia article on the subject and it illustrates that same kind of structure that was on the previous web page and it gives some examples of real-world large-scale and structures that were built this way and bridges all sorts of things and you can actually do a lot of theory on these working out the physics and predicting exact loads on the uh, compression and tension parts of the structure and making sure they're you know adequately strong if you're going to build it for real and uh, I didn't really want to get into all that but I decided to try my hand at building a tensegrity structure and hoping it would be a very quick job just sort of throw it together I've seen a few photos on the internet showing various extremely simple tensegrity structures and I'm going to build something that resembles those. But I didn't see any actual instructions for them. Maybe if I dug deeper I would have, but um, I didn't want to copy somebody else's design necessarily. I wanted to use the general shape and then work it out myself to see how close I could come to get it to working without spending a pile of time on it. So let's get started. So the materials from my tensegrity structure include uh, six, seven, eight popsicle sticks and uh, some black thread. I'm not sure what the material is on here. Okay, it's 100% polyester. 100M was it? 100 micron? Anyway normal black sewing thread, polyester, and uh, scissors, and probably some epoxy and or super glue. Since this is really a quick and dirty project, didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, I'm just using my hot glue gun. That'll be the quickest glue up time, at least that I can trust in this kind of situation. I don't think the CA or super glue will be strong enough in the way I would use it here, so um, hot melt glue it is. I'm just holding three of the popsicle sticks in an equilateral triangle, more or less. It's not all that critical, but I'm trying to get them to line up pretty well. I'm going to have to remove one at a time and put glue on it, and then let that set for 15 to 30 seconds, however long it takes and then put glue on the other sections. Okay, there's one triangle glued up. I did try to get, um, instead of 
overlapping always in the same direction I decided to uh, make this the base and therefore this is the place where I'm going to put this would be the angled tension post that'll come up from here and I wanted that to be flat so I laid that one flat and then let the other corner here be a little cattywampus. I want the compression posts or whatever we're going to call those to be centrally located at the uh, point where they're connected so I've traced the outline of one of my triangles and marked where the center point is or is it? It's not really the center point, it's the center point from here to here but I'm thinking it might be better to make it the center point of the triangle instead instead of the center point of the um, possible span of the compression post. I'm thinking that a good angle for the compression post will be 60 degrees so I've got this protractor set up for that and I'm going to make a cut on one of the remaining popsicle sticks at that angle so I'm just going to use my pull saw on this like that now I've got this piece this is going to be the base and I've got the center line of one of the straight sections marked now the idea here is that um, they're both going to be like this and although it's probably not strictly necessary to do it this way I'm going to go with um, some asymmetry on this so I'm going to have one stick going up like this and then I want the other stick coming down which means that one will be attached to the point of the other triangle kind of like this so this guy will sit like this and this guy will sit like that now for some reason the uh, angle didn't come out very good on that one it's not at the same angle it's close it's close enough actually I think and I'm going to probably have these about that high the idea is that there's going to be a um, piece of thread going between these two points vertically and then there are going to be pieces of thread going between each of the corners of the triangles so I just need to reinforce these compression posts here the hot melt glue is actually pretty strong but I want it to be stronger so I'm going to put some additional fillets of glue along the sides there I'm probably going to have to trim these uh, sticks um, but first I want to establish how far apart the uh, triangles are going to be looks like about four and a half inches is going to be about right I'm making some marks on a scrap of pine that I've got laying around this is going to be my alignment jig so I'm going to cut some slots into here and here that's four and a half inches apart and then slot the uh, popsicle sticks down into there so those need to be roughly three-eighths of an inch deep well I've got that set into there but there's a problem it's pretty apparent that these two points are not going to hang vertically which they should so I need to bring these a little bit these triangles a little bit closer together well actually it doesn't make any difference how close together the two triangles are 
if the angles are off on these uh, compression pieces, then they're not going to, you know, get any more in line with each other or not. However, I realize that my my bottom triangle here was tilted out a little bit, and that makes a huge difference. So I just need to make sure this guy's standing up straight. And then they'll be just about perfect. I cut the slot on the pine uh, scrap pretty good on here that fits in really nicely. I just have a piece of tape on here to keep it from sliding this way. This one I cut a little too wide and I had to shim it with a piece of cardboard, which is probably why it doesn't want to stand up straight. So I've temporarily taped up uh, this piece of a, uh, a compound square to assure that it's vertical. And it looks like those are just about in alignment. So um, now I have to tack some thread across these points. And I'm probably going to use super glue for that because my manual dexterity at this point in my life is not that great that I think I can do a lot of very accurate tying of thread into knots. So I think super glue is going to be a better choice for this. I've pre cut some overly long pieces of thread and now that everything's in position here I'm going to do an initial tack of the thread into position keeping it as tight as I can and hit it with a little accelerant so it sets up quickly. Okay I've laid the thread along the popsicle sticks near the, the joints and um, then tape, wrap them around and tape them temporarily with some masking tape. Now they do want to ride up the, uh, the angles here so I'm going to have to hold that down with one finger while I spray the accelerant with the other hand. Okay, a little bit of CA glue around the corners and I held the thread down to where it should be with the tip of an X-Acto knife and uh, applied the glue and then hit it with the accelerator to lock it in place and now I can take my time to uh, make a complete wrap of thread around here and glue it all the way around. That'll be plenty secure. Okay, one thread wrapped all the way around and super glued or CA glued and it's reasonably tight and it's wrapped around and CA glued there so that should be about as strong as if I'd knotted it. Using a similar method I've got thread on the second corner of the triangle. Okay all three corner threads are on Now, I have to address the, um, the tension thread between the two compression posts. I've made a couple of marks on there and just eyeballing it with the bubble level. It looks like those are pretty close to being in line that'll be vertical when the whole thing is tipped up. So I'm going to drill a couple of holes there. Alright, the holes have been drilled. Okay, the whole thing is put together. I've got my threads. They're all under tension. That's been assisted by having it in this jig while I'm putting them together and they're all reasonably tight. Now if Buckminster Fuller is correct about this, and if I haven't screwed something fundamental up, this should have some structural stability once I take it out of the jigs. And there it is.
wonder if it can hold any weight. Nope. But that's because it's a, a minimally stable structure, so I have to straighten out the threads again. Okay, so balance is very important to this. There we go. It's uh, <laughs> This thread has gone slack on it, but it is holding the weight. And that's quite a lot of weight for it. There's probably a certain amount of stretchiness in those threads as well. I wonder what else I can put on here that might be a little friendlier to it. Maybe no, nope, that's too much. But again, it might do it if I get the weight just just right like that. Okay, before I put this on display somewhere, here's a final overview. All went together pretty well. Now if I had built this in a more complex design with more uh, angles of tension, instead of the very simple arrangement that's shown here, uh, it would be more stable and you wouldn't be able to collapse it like that, but this is probably the most minimalistic uh, application of this, uh, this principle. So I decided to build another one I'm going to put one on my other desk just for just for fun. It's going to be a little different, but it's going to have the same components. On this one, I'm going to use fishing line, even though it doesn't show up so well in the video, instead of black thread. And I'm going to use super glue for everything instead of hot melt glue and see how that works out. So there is the two triangles super glued together using accelerant, of course. And a couple more sticks cut off at uh, 30 degrees or 60 degrees, depending where you measure from. So on this one, both of them are identical. They both have the compression strut on the uh, flat side instead of one coming from the peak. That means that when they're oriented like this, the... Uh, peaks here are going to go to the flats instead of peaks to peaks. Okay, on this one the uh, holes are in the centers and because of this uh, compression post here the hole is on it near the base. I could have probably put it just a little off center but I think the fishing line will go better if it can come from here. And on the opposing piece, the holes are at the corners. Because of the opposing sides here, I can't use this simple jig to hold everything together. I have to do this much more elaborate rig. Um, I just use some scrap strips of wood hastily super glued together and masking taped down to the two compression frames, holding it in about the right position 
The only thing I don't think I want to have now is that much of an overhang on these two pieces. So, on the other hand, why not? It's not going to hurt anything. Maybe I'll just leave them the way they are. Okay, the corner fishing lines are in, although nearly invisible in this shot. And I decided to trim off these struts a little bit, um, and I've drilled holes in them for the final piece of fishing line. I am finding that the fishing line is a pain in the butt to deal with, and uh, I think thread would have been a lot easier. It's easier to tie knots. It super glues better. Um, if I do one of these again, it'll probably be thread. Well, I screwed up on this one. Um, probably because I was trying to tie knots in the fishing line and so on. They weren't as much under tension as I would have wanted. And by the time I took the support frame out, and, uh, you know, it's all very wobbly until you put this middle thread under tension, which puts the outer ones on tension, then it becomes stable but then it closes up this distance here, so I need to figure out some way to remedy that. Alright, I've made a offset compression beam here, or post, and um, I'm wondering if it'll just pick itself up when I start tensioning this middle part. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. It's a little lopsided. It's not hanging quite straight, probably because my corner threads aren't precisely tensioned. I don't know what I can do about that at this point. Alright, there's the finished product. It is a little lopsided, but I think it's more about... well, it's a combination of exact tension on the different lines and also that I didn't completely get these pieces straight and thirdly that I made this piece here I should have offset this piece a little bit to the right so that this piece could be in line with this one and then this one of course leans off to the left a little bit because I never put it on straight to begin with and then the piece has a bit of a warp to it too which doesn't make things any better I wonder if I can unwarp that a little bit. Might be worth a try. Yeah, I was able to bend it ever so slightly. It straightened it up a little bit. There's still a slight misalignment there, but it's it's not bad. It's better than it was. So that's kind of cool. It's the same, but different from this other one. And it's definitely more rigid. This one is, you know, the the lines are not as tight probably because they're thread and just the stiffness of the fishing line probably helps a little bit too but this is this has a more rigid feel when you push on it this one's got a bit more give I suspect that this one will be more rigid when holding a weight um, I'll just use this block of wood yeah it's doing a, a better job it's less picky about the balance. Just don't look like it can be so, does it? Tape measure is pretty heavy. No, it's not going to hold that. Too much give. Maybe this block of wood. That's yeah, holding that. Pretty cool.
Actually, this guy should be able to hold. It can hold that one, but it's definitely not as rigid. We're losing tension there as we did before. So this is actually the more stable design here. 